So like there is a path to do it. There's a path to financial freedom. First steps, identify who you are and identify like what works best for you based on your personal situation and then work on that. And um, I think that's critically important. And I see, quite frankly, I see a lot of people uh, getting that wrong. It's like, it's like they. Hello, you're listening to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast, presented by Brandon Elliott. This show will be going over all aspects of real estate investing and is intended to educate, motivate, and prepare you to take action on your first or next real estate investment. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Thank you for listening and enjoy. Welcome back, everyone, to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Brandon Elliott. I'm excited today. We have a special guest coming from St. Louis. Jim, what's happening? How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, Brandon. Yeah, so talk to me. You're doing a bunch of things in real estate. Anybody out there that doesn't know who you are, where you're from, what you're up to, do you mind just giving that 30,000-foot view for listeners? Absolutely. Yeah, so I've been investing since 2006. So, gosh, that makes me feel old now. And I founded three real estate companies and two real estate funds. The three companies really run run without me now. Uh, I have business partners that handle that. As a team, we've done I, mean, I think it's over thirty five hundred deals now over the years, and and so it's it's been quite a lift uh, to get everything going where it's at. And but you know that wasn't always the case though. So like I, I say that number, that number seems crazy big to me. And you know, I see myself as the guy that studied real estate for a year and did my first deal. It took me 18 whole months to just do one deal. So it's been quite the journey to, to you know, grow multiple businesses over the last decade and a half and, and get to the point where we're at now with, uh, you know, with, I think there's over 130 partners now in our real estate funds. But yeah, happy to be here and hopefully I can provide some value for y'all. Nice. Jim, yeah. talk to me. What are the three companies consist of? Yeah, so there's synergy between them. Uh, so Three Doors is the name of our company that advises homeowners on all of their options uh, when they sell a home. And one of the options is selling to a, an investor. Another option is what a realtor can do for you if you list it on the, on the market. And then the third option is there's a lot of creative financing opportunities out there. So we call it Three Doors because the, you know, the, the door represents the options of, of how you can sell your property. Uh, and then we have a company called Homeways that specializes in opening up a way to home ownership for deserving families. And then a client first lending, the hard money lending company, which gives investors, lends investors money to do flips and, and everything like that. So, so yeah, but I mean, we, it's a lot now, you know, we have over 30 team members and that's not including all the 1099s with the contractors and everything like that. But yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely a decade and a half journey. It didn't always it wasn't always that way, right? You know, we kind of did one thing and kind of built on and, and added on a, a, as we grew down the line. Nice. So yeah. w- what does your day-to-day look like currently? Yeah. So I have a, a podcast myself called The Passive Wealth Show, and it's really just set up to try and teach people how to invest in a passive way. You know, I think a lot of people fall in love with the idea of real estate investing and the passive income that, you know, you can become financially free on. And then we quickly realize if, if we invest the traditional way, finding a property, negotiating it, appraising it and everything else, managing contractors, everything else that it takes to be to do a deal is anything but passive. Right. Yeah. And so what the Passive Wealth Show is all about is trying to say, hey, guys, there is ways to invest into real estate funds. There's ways to invest passively through other people. And uh, what we've found is the best partnerships in real estate. What I've found is is you have a, a, is a partner with money and then you have a partner with time. So one person, one party will do all the work, the other party will pay for everything. And then the partner with money wins because they paid for everything and they, they got a passive investment. The partner with time wins because they maybe didn't have the money to be able to pull the deal off, right? And it, you know, what's interesting is, is that's one of the ways we scale our business because as a 22-year-old, when I started, I didn't have the money to, to do deals. But what we did is we went to private lenders who had money. And we said, hey, will you lend us money so we can do these flips? Yeah, we'll pay you a return on it. No matter if we make money or lose money, we'll just pay you interest on the loan that you give us. And we were slowly build over time. And I think uh, at one point, oh my gosh, this is back in like 2016, we had, or maybe 2017, we had like 350 flips going at the same time. And that was a wild year because the year before that, we only had 150 that were going. So we doubled that year. 
And, you know, that was one of the first big lessons that I learned was, you know, we got into real estate, we wanted to make more money and we started doing more flips, doing more deals. And it became about more about doing more deals uh, than it came, became about netting more income and holding on to it. Uh, so the year that we did the 350, we actually made less money than the year we did the 150 flips the year before. And, you know, that was a rude awakening that, okay, well, we have our income set up. It's already at a good enough place. Why try and get the hamster wheel spinning further and just generating more income? Uh, why not start investing it in more of a passive way and start building passive wealth because we already have a revenue stream coming in? And made a lot of the difference now is that, you know, we just didn't keep flipping and only flipping and, and getting the, the hamster wheel spinning for it further and faster. And we really started investing into buy and hold strategies. And yeah, and, uh, it's it's made a world of difference for us and our net worth. Yeah. And so like the, the fix and flip type of investor, that's active income, wholesaling, that's a job, that's active income, right? But, you know, getting those leads in and so forth, which is all fine, dandy, it's all good. A lot of people want to get to that passive income approach, especially if they're not trusting on the government or social security to like have their retirement plan set up. They they need something kind of working for them and getting uh, kind of out of that rat race, if you will. But like you mentioned, you know, it's very far and few in between to get to that that true passive income. You know, we have almost 10 million in real estate assets and about $48,000 a month coming in cash flow off of uh, real estate. But let me tell you the the whole passive income part of it. We're still active, making sure that property management contractors things are getting done. And so it's very uh, unless you are really the bank, like you were mentioning, you you gave opportunities from investors that trusted in you, and you were going to pay them back a certain percentage, whether the deal went well or not as a debt position, mm. but secured by the real estate asset, right? So, so that's that different piece of it that you could truly have protection and yeah. real passive income by writing the check and being done with it. Yeah, that's, that's right. So passive income is true, and it's a lie at the same time. Mm. So the lie is, is, is that real estate investing requires work. Yeah. There's, to make money, there's work that's needed to be done. Yep. So passive income, if you're the one doing the work, is actually a lie. You're, what you're really doing is starting a business that's recurring revenue. And as if you're a doctor or you're somebody that's a high income earner already and you decide to start flipping homes, well, you're just creating more income that's going to be taxed more and you're creating a, you're starting a new business and creating more work for yourself, right? Yep. And a lot of, I see a lot of people that already have the income piece figured out that's all in love with this passive income and this financial freedom. I see them go down this path and it's like, well, oh man, well, there's not much passive there. And they, they buy a couple of rentals and they're like, holy cow, this is more work than I care to to do. Um, you know, I, I, I have my two rentals. I'm just going to be done with this now. Mm-hmm. And they don't, it's very rare for someone to end up owning enough real estate where, where they have a full-time job and they're active, actively doing it to become financially free just exclusively through real estate if you're the one doing the work. And so that's the lie part of it. But the truth of it is that real estate investing can be incredibly passive if you're investing through other people. Yes. Other people are what can make it passive. So so in my case, in Ryan's case, we were 22, we were just getting going. And, you know, we, we did our first couple deals, we were building a nest egg and, and uh, we were making a passive income stream for private individuals. And, you know, one of the most proud achievements that we have is since 2006, when we started, that's been over $250 million has been invested with private lenders through us. And we've hit our promise returns 100% of the time. So that's like, so you can take an individual or now what where Ryan and I are is we have real estate funds. You can, you can take a team or, or invest into a REIT. Uh, that's a commonly known one too. And you can invest into these uh, vehicles or a team can do all the work for you and, and make it completely passive as well. So, so it, it's a really amazing thing investing into real estate and, and all the numbers and, and uh, you know, back even 10 years ago, these weren't all that common. They were, they're harder to find, harder to, to come across. And here we are now in 2024 at the time of this recording. And there's a lot of people doing really well with these mechanisms and, and these vehicles. Right. So, so it's been a great thing. It's been a, it's, it's been a great thing to be a part of. Yeah. And so it really comes down to, like you mentioned for real estate, it, it takes work. It requires 
action and work to be able to make it successful. So it really comes down to if you want it to be passive, you got to figure out who's going to be putting in the work. And so there's active, you know, people actually putting that you trust your money with to be able to make it happen and act more as the bank. And even the bank needs to step in every once in a while to be able to make, you know, either take it back or, or uh, make sure that the the money comes back. You know, that's right. Yeah. And there's I mean, there is ways if so, if you have existing rental properties and like you're tired of um, being a landlord, there are ways you can sell your property and turn it into passive income without having any more landlord responsibility. So I don't, Brandon, have you ever heard of like creative financing or owner financing before? Of course. Yep. So yeah. So well, at Three Doors, we've helped. We had one client that made over $50,000 after she sold her house because we turned her into the bank. And rather than when she sold it, having the buyer just go get a normal loan, she gave the loan to the buyer and then now was making monthly payments uh, from that loan. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's I just love I love thinking about it this way. I love, you know, finding ways to create passive income with while we still honor our time. And, you know, and perhaps, you know, one of the big reasons why I look at it this way and why I think it's so important is uh, my first job out of college was working for a self-made uh, billionaire. Wow. And yeah, and I was just an intern. So like, you know, it's not like, you know, I was like his right hand man or anything like that. But what we were doing was we were labeling his wine collection. And because we were labeling his wine collection, we really got, to, you know, it was a three person team. We were in his house and kind of got to know him on more of a personal level than maybe in a professional setting. Sure. And the first week as a 21 year old, I was in awe of this guy. He had a, a gorgeous girlfriend. He had uh, he had millions of dollars of wine. He had his own private jet. You know, we were, you know, at the time I was chugging glasses of champagne, even though I'm upset because they were literally thousands of dollars worth of champagne that I was just chugging, chugging like I was in the college still or whatever. That so like, you know, the first week I really was idolizing this guy and I was like, wow, this is why America is so great. Here's a guy just like me. He puts one one pant leg on at a time. And I mean, if he can do it like me, yeah, why can't I do it? I mean, America provides these opportunities for us. Sure. And then I also saw the darkness of it, too, uh, mm -hmm. because as I got to know him, I realized, wow, this is one of the most depressed, unhappy individuals I've ever met in my life. Wow. Yeah. What do you, what do you think that stemmed from? So what I think happened was he was on the right of an exploding business and the journey of becoming a billionaire became first and foremost and what was most important. And uh, everything else kind of was collateral damage. Mm. His family wouldn't talk to him. And, and, and you know, he, he was kind of, here's a guy that material wise had not only the pinnacle of business achievement, but he had yeah. really anything money could buy, he could buy. Yep. And yet, he was hollow on the inside. And wow. so and so I've really set that out as like a guiding principle for my investing journey is that, you know, I, I believe in that we should measure our success by what we gave up to get it. I like that. I couldn't relate more with that. When I was younger, like growing up, like American poor, still very blessed, but Section 8 and food stamps and stuff like that, single parent mother uh, living off a of, uh, Social Security the biggest problem in the household was money, right? That's what I thought if we hit the lottery, we would be good to go. And then I actually started dating somebody that was like rich for our area. Mm -hmm. And I saw all the chaos and all the problems within that household that I was like, wow, you know, so money doesn't, it was a great yeah. learning lesson, just like you experienced basically. So it really makes you prioritize. It's not just about the money. It's also about your time, your, your, no, your well-being really. So yeah. I'm sure that's a huge that's learning right. curve for you. Yeah. If I make a million dollars this year, then I'll be happy. Yeah. Can't we just be happy now and go after and try and make a million dollars at the same time? Like, yeah. Like uh, the if thens guys, oh my goodness. Um, True. And so, yeah. So, and then that's really like the passive wealth show and why I I get so excited and, and jazzed up about this because, you know, like a lot of people love the idea of investing and then they want to get into it and they quickly realize, well, I have a full time job. Yep. Then I'm trying to invest on the nights and weekends and all can, this on the side. And yeah, I mean, here's the deal. Like um, there's different advice I would give for different people. Right. Sure. There's not a one size fits all answer. Like I've had seasons of my life. I would be hypocritical if I didn't tell you guys this, or I worked my tail off. Yep. 
I worked so hard during those seasons. And I've had seasons in my life where I really have a lot of flexibility because I, I worked my tail off. And so like for me, when I was 22 and I, I didn't have any savings, I, I was just getting going. That was the path for me. And that, that was that was what was best for me. And and I didn't have kids at the time. And uh, I was, you know, dating my girlfriend at the time and, and now wife. And yeah, that was completely OK for that situation. And as chain, things have changed, I have four kids now. I'm able to be very present. I'm able to coach multiple of my kids' teams. And because like if I have to give up a little bit of net worth to to be able to to really be a present dad. Yeah, be a better father, better husband. Yeah, that's right. Like I'm good with that because I've seen what happened to someone else who, who, who made that other choice, right? Yeah. And I think like we need to think about that, guys. Like if you're at a spot where, hey, you don't have much savings, the income that you have from your current job isn't enough, you have in your heart to invest in real estate and you need to enter into a season of work. Well, great. Uh, have, you know, if you're married and if you have kids, like, like it's okay for you to do that, but have a conversation with your significant sure. other. Make sure they're on board with it. How do we do this as a team and come together to make this happen as our goals? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, put a deadline on it. Like, like I have to achieve two deals within the next 12 months and make $50,000 through those deals. And if I don't, like, now it's the next chapter and now I need to go down more of the corporate America route and, and try and, grow that way, you know, or, or if you, you know, you're already a doctor that's already making enough money to be able to have money to invest rather than figuring out how you invest and do all the work yourself. What I'd like you to challenge yourself on is, is how do you sharpen your skill and really get good at passively investing? Yeah. At identifying investment opportunities, identifying teams and identifying individuals that can make money for you. And allow your money to go out into the world and make money back. And and the crazy thing is, is like for like our equity fund, like the returns like our partners are getting from their couch are more than what I made full time for my first five years doing my own thing. Uh, because, you know, like our team has has some things figured out. Right. And so like there is a path to do it. There's a path to financial freedom. First steps, identify who you are. And identify like what works best for you based on your personal situation and then work on that. And um, I think that's critically important. And I see, quite frankly, I see a lot of people getting that wrong. It's like it's like they skip that step or it's not like an obvious one. And and perhaps it's not that obvious because like in school, all of our worth was doing a test, filling out the bubbles correctly, getting an A, getting an A on the test. And it was like what I could do and what I learned and what I know. Right? Whereas in the real world, finding someone else to fill out the bubbles and do the test with you, like, or so to speak, right? Or, or to yep. do all the work for you. Uh, that's different. It like, is. You don't have to ask yourself, how do I do all of these investing things? Like lease purchase is a, de- is a strategy that we have that's phenomenal right now. It's going really well. You don't have to figure out all the ins and outs of, of how it works and everything like that. You just have to say, well, who do I know? Who do I know that's doing this? And, you know, how do I vet them? How do I make sure that this is a secure investment and then you know find the who and then allow them to do all the all the how for you right i mean it's a different way of thinking uh, that we didn't grow up with right yeah jim what was the the name of uh the billionaire mentor that he was your first mentor right yeah i'm I'm not comfortable sharing it you know because like i get a little personal details on it so rather kind of keep it private sure uh, yeah yeah. what passive income streams did you kind of learn from him to get where he was yeah, so he actually wasn't, he was a business owner. He wasn't a real really? estate investor, right? So I think, so the thing that happened with him was like, it was the belief that it can be done, yep. right? So like, like, hey, here's a guy just like me. So that was a big first step. And then it was really about the opportunity cost of it if you do it. Yep. Uh, that was really my big lessons. But as far as like investing goes, what do I like to do right now? I am a huge fan of single family real estate right now. So it is my area of expertise. I, I don't know all the others as well, but we're in a housing shortage right now. Yeah. And what interest rates have done is they've slowed down the unit flow and the unit count. Like if a market's used to having 10,000 sales in a month, uh, it might be down to 600 or I'm sorry, 6,000 sales a month or a year. You know, so like what interest rates do is it shrinks the flow of deals. It doesn't necessarily tip the supply of buyers to sellers. And if you think about it, it makes sense because uh, how many people do we know that don't want to give up their interest rate and sell their property? 
right now. Oh, I have a three. I just heard the other day, one of my buddies says, oh, I have a 2.6% interest rate. I'm never moving. I am not giving that interest rate up. Well, that's a seller that doesn't have a house to put onto the market, right? So for every buyer that's leaving the real estate market, there's a seller also not entering into the real estate market because of interest rates. So we have a great opportunity to buy in a slower market that that the underlying dynamics is, is very much a, a seller's market. Before interest rates went up, we had 30, 40, 50 offers on a lot of the listings. So what I believe is that's a great buy and hold opportunity right now. And I have a whole white paper around this where I dive into the Harvard study and, and everything like that, that uh, you know, I, can, I can offer your listeners for if they'd like to Cool. You know, if they'd like to kind of like learn more about it, I, all my stuff's for you guys. I don't, you know, I'm not trying to sell a $20,000 mastermind or anything like that. <laughs> I'm just trying to help people. So, yeah. Cool. I love it. Cool. So what does the future look like for you guys? What does the future look like? Great question. Yeah. I mean, we are, our, our funds have been growing. Yeah. We have the 130 partners and we see it continuing to grow in, in the near future. Uh, right now we're investing out of St. Louis, Missouri. We would like to, at some point this year, by the end of the year, be not just in St. Louis and kind of start to grow out and, and, and expand our operations out, out of just the area. And then really just, uh, I love this, man. I, thank you so much for having me on. I, I love I love talking. I love speaking. I love trying to challenge how people think about things and uh, that there are other options out there. And I mean, even just like like you think about the, these passive structures I've been saying that you can invest in, like it's amazing to me how few people know you can invest with IRA money. You know, it's like, it's, it's so like they say, well, no, I thought I had to invest with my financial planner and I need to, I can only invest into mutual funds and index funds and all that. Well, no, you can actually take uh, self-directed IRA money and put it and invest it into real estate, you know? And it's like, oh, okay, well, that sounds cool. And one of my investor friends I was talking to, she has a Roth IRA and, and she has her entire rental portfolio in there and she's good. She's set up and she makes a lot of, a lot of revenue, a lot of income uh, through it. And, you know, she doesn't have to worry about, oh, is there a war coming or is there a war going on? Is the war going to get worse? What's the economy going to do? Is it going to go up or down? And because she's diversified into an asset that has a real value, people have to live in some, have to live somewhere. And that pa- asset happens to generate her passive income. And, and it doesn't matter how long or, or not she lives, you know, cause she's able to generate income from something that's going to appreciate over time. So love it. Jim, yeah, how, absolutely. how can uh, people get a hold of you? Yeah. So if you just remember my name, jimmanning.com, I actually have my team. I have like a little thing for my team. If, if anyone wants to reach out and kind of connect with us, well, you know, we, you can schedule a call with us and and the reason why I like to do that, guys, is uh, when I was 22 and I only did one deal in my first 18 months, what held me back during that time and why I almost failed to launch was my ego. I had to be the guy that like had all the answers and that knew. And I didn't want to reach out to anybody until I like knew how to be a real estate investor because I didn't want them to look down on me. And the second I started reaching out and connecting and asking questions to people that knew more than me, then I started doing deals. So the best gift I can give Brandon, your y'all's listeners is is just to offer our time up. Specifically, what our expertise is, we can help you be a passive investor, find opportunities to invest 100% passive in real estate. We can teach you how to do a, a structure called lease purchase deals. That's been an amazing blessing for us as well. And and then also, if you're an existing landlord and you have a, a single family piece of real estate that you're not really sure what to do with, we can help you turn uh, turn it into uh, more income. On average, our lease purchase model and generates about $500 more per month without any of the repairs and maintenance. So so anyway, if, if any of those things sound like a, you'd like to learn more about, just go to jimmanning.com. And then uh, also I have some uh, courses as well. Uh, so we generated over $10 million in income over the last two years uh, through three main strategies. And I have courses that break down like what the strategies are uh, that, you know, if you sign up for the call, we'll just gift you those and, and give those to you for free as well. And along with uh, some research I've done on what's going on in single family real estate, is it going to go down, up? up, down, or sideways and all that. I, I got a ton of great information in the courses. So, cool. but yeah, jimmanning.com. We'll love to, love to connect with you and, and provide you any value that I can. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for uh, giving that to the audience. Guys, if you want to reach out, 
by all means, go and uh, and do that. And then otherwise, if you want to connect with me, you can do so on Instagram. It is creditcounselelite.com. Otherwise, on Instagram, Brandon Elliott Investments. If you're looking to uh, get more information about how we are teaching business owners how to get funding upwards of $500,000, that's two, three, four, or even $500,000 in the next 30 to 90 days at 0% interest, something that's repeatable every six months, 0% interest for 18 months. Check out creditcounselelite.com. That's www.creditcounselelite.com. Quick 10 minute video that explains more in detail what the heck I'm talking about. But then afterwards, you can actually book a call with us to get a free second opinion today to hear more about what it looks like to work with us. So check out creditcounselelite.com today. And as always, hit that subscribe button if you have not already for Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast. After hitting that subscribe button, you'll get the newest notification every Monday. Leave that five-star review. Greatly appreciate all the love, all the support. You guys are amazing. Keep it coming and share this out. We'll see you on the next episode. Till next time, God bless. Thanks, Jim. This has been another episode of Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast, brought to you by Brandon Elliott. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Also, please don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment below. Thanks again for joining. Until next time, God bless.